This episode is brought to you by Best Buy. Whether you're searching for exciting gifts or trying to snag the hottest holiday deals, Best Buy is here to help. From air fryers for the aspiring foodies in your life to smart watches your fitness friends will love, Best Buy is your gifting destination for everyone on your list. And Best Buy makes it easy to give your gifts how and when you need them with free next day delivery on thousands of items as well as same day delivery and in-store pickup options. Shop great deals on gifts now at Best Buy. Welcome to Mom and Dad Are Fighting, Slate's parenting podcast for Monday, November 28th, the Ashamed of My Son edition. I'm Zach Rosen. I make the Best Advice Show podcast. I'm the dad of Noah, who's five, and Ami, who's two. We live in Detroit. I'm Elizabeth Newcamp. I write the homeschool and family travel blog, Dutch Dutch Goose. I'm the mom to three littles, Henry, who's 10, Oliver, who's eight, and Teddy, who's six. We live in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm Jamila Lemieux. I'm a writer, contributor to Slate's Care and Feeding Parenting column, and mom to Naima, who's nine and a half, and we live in L.A. Today on the show, we have a parent who is angry and ashamed that their son and his friend were using the word gay as an insult. Not only that, but they were texting about her son's best friend. She talked with her son, but she has no idea how to handle the situation further. So we're going to give some advice. But first, we wanted to jump into our Monday mailbag. Here are two recent letters from listeners. Hi, Mom and Dad. In response to your friendship episode, I want to offer some thanks. I'm a freshman in college, and the majority of the friends I've made have come from me chanting, Channel Elizabeth to myself, because muttering incessantly to yourself is a surefire way to find a friend. Every time I ask for a phone number or ask someone for help, even when I don't really need it, or just sit down and start talking to someone, it's because of Elizabeth's advice. It took me a good bit longer than most people, but lo and behold... I have friends now. Thank you, Elizabeth. I love this show so much. Liz, wow, you changed someone's life. I just want to say to this person, good on her, because she did the work. Like, it is not easy, and especially not in college, (laughs) to just go do these things and be like, I'm going to do this. So I'm glad I could motivate you, but you did the work. And then we got another one. Hi, Mom and Dad. You all discussed how you meet friends. I found it odd that no one mentioned volunteering, especially local groups who welcome all ages, like parks slash nature and neighborhood groups. For example, trees and nature are everywhere in America, even in urban settings, and any age child should accompany a parent with gardening events, cleanups, invasive species, projects, etc. Seems like a miss, considering parks were mentioned over and over. I've met some of my bestie parents through these volunteer groups. It's a game changer, especially for the nature curious. Yeah, I'm not sure how we left out volunteering, but volunteering is a is a great way to meet people who are interested in your passions, too, because you tend to be able to to focus in your volunteering on something you care about. So you've already kind of honed down the type of people that are going to show up. This is a great recommendation. Thank you, listener. Yes, thanks for filling in that hole. Do you have any tried and true friendship advice? We'd love to hear it. Send it to momanddad at slate.com. We're going to take a quick break before we hear today's listener question. Be back in a jiffy. Come to Etsy for thoughtful holiday gifts for all the people in your life. From friends to family, roommates to co-workers, you can find something special for everyone on your list on Etsy. Etsy has a wide range of extraordinary gifts, so you're sure to find the perfect presents. Shop Etsy for fashion, decor, personalized gifts, and so much more. Discover presents that are both meaningful and for all budgets. When you shop on Etsy, you're shopping directly from makers, so every purchase supports a small business. New to Etsy? Use code MARY10, that's M-E-R-R-Y 10, at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. That's code MARY10. Maximum value of $50. Offer ends December 31st, 2022. See terms at etsy.com slash terms. For gifts of all kinds, Etsy has it. Shop etsy.com. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm looking forward to some colder weather. Just all of the things that the winter season has to offer. Of course, though, this also means that it's time to start thinking about holiday gift giving. 
KiwiCo delivers super cool science, technology, and art projects for kids. They have nine different subscription lines for different ages and categories, so there's truly something for every kid. KiwiCo boxes make wonderful gifts, and of course, the subscription line will deliver a box to your door every month. You don't have to go shopping for all of the different things to do an arts and crafts project. Everything you need arrives right in your box, and you can choose from so many different things depending on what your kids are into. Give them the tools to learn new skills, build new experiences, and make new connections to the broader world. As a parent, it can be hard to find creative ways to keep your children busy and challenged, particularly thinking about them being home over holiday break or having guests in your home. KiwiCo does all the legwork for you so you or your guests can spend quality time tackling these projects with your kids. There's something for kids of all ages. There's, of course, no commitment, so you can pause or cancel at any time. Give awesome this holiday season with KiwiCo. Get your first month free on any crate line at kiwico.com slash mom and dad. That's your first month free at kiwico.com slash mom and dad. We are back. Shasha, can you read today's listener question for us? Dear mom and dad, I saw a text conversation between my 13-year-old son and one of his friends. In the chat, they called another friend gay many times. I'm upset because it seemed like they were acting as if being gay was a bad thing. In this family, we know love is love. He has never been told that living a certain type of life would be bad or lesser than. Also, the friend in question is my son's best friend. Obviously, I spoke to my son immediately about it. I asked him how he thought his friend would feel if he saw all these texts, etc. And I asked him why he would say anything like that. My son seemed upset that he took part in the conversation. He didn't really have an answer to why he sent the texts and said he knows that his friend would be upset if he saw them. I suggested he ask his other friend to delete the text from his phone and he deleted the text from his phone. But now I'm second guessing if he should ask the other person to delete the text from their phone. What if that kid is a shit disturber and this cues that other kid to save those texts and show the best friend? Would it be better for him to brush it under the rug? Should he address it with his best friend? I honestly have no idea how he should handle this situation. Sincerely, ashamed of my son for the first time ever. Ooh, there's a lot here. Beyond just trying to get a hold of this text conversation so it doesn't get out, you really have to have some very serious conversations with your son, if you haven't already, about using it in that way. You know, this is supposed to be his best friend, and you're using this word in an insulting manner towards him. Um, I think this is a great time for a punishment essay. I had to write them at times when I was a kid. I think your child should have to write something about uh, the word gay, maybe a history of the word gay, you know, or an essay explaining why we don't use the word gay as an insult and how hurtful it can be and just why that is. Um, I think at 13, you're old enough to do that. Maybe two pages, double-sided, you know, like, you really have to nip this in the bud. You, You can't brush this off and make this normal because he could be using this word to taunt kids at school, you know, to make them feel small. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's just relegated to this private conversation that perhaps he's embarrassed about or, you know, I think you really want to get a handle on how deep this goes for him and just how clear he is on what it means to be gay. You know, like you say that in this house, love is love, but sometimes those messages that we're trying really hard to communicate to our kids, you know, we can't take for granted that they're really receiving them, especially when we know they're getting other messages outside. As far as this text conversation with this other child, I, on one hand, you know, your son would probably know better than us. What does he think? You know, because on one hand, the other kid could be like, sure, it's no problem. I don't care. They also could be the type to be like, oh, why is this so important to you? Now this is something that I have over you. Now I've got this conversation that I can embarrass you with. You know, you've been saying these nasty things about your so-called best friend. It could really go either way. I think your son should also be prepared for the possibility that his friend finds out that he said these things because he said them to another person. So again, like unless there's trust there and and he's clear, like you said, this kid is a shit starter, 
he very well may bring it up. And that's something your son is going to have to live with because he chose to say these things about his best friend. He chose to use that word in a nasty way. And that could be a potential consequence of that. I think the bigger issue is to really get your son to understand the error of his ways so that he doesn't do the same thing again. So he doesn't you know, because he may not be the one who's inclined to say it himself. Maybe he is just parroting what he's heard other kids say at school. But if he's the one who sits idly by when this word is being flung around in that way, that's just as problematic. I think that's great advice. I am I'm going to agree wholeheartedly with the punishment essay. This is a great, great age to assign some kind of project. On the issue of whether he has to tell his best friend, we grew up hearing the story that I don't know if this is true, but it's about the, like, um, how bison run towards towards a storm. The storm will catch up with you one way or the other, but if you're running towards it, you can pass under it. I have no idea if that's true about bison. But I think a lot of times when I'm in these situations or dealing with this where I've done something wrong that I have to be the bison, right? I can't, I can be the cow or whatever and run away, the other livestock that run away from it. But that storm is coming for you. And if it doesn't come today or it doesn't come tomorrow or even this year, this can come for him at some point in this relationship with his friend. And I think your job is to explain that, you know, say, you know, I love you. Obviously, I'm ashamed of this behavior. I This is something, of course, now we've talked about. We've done this volunteer thing. But we have to make this right with your friend. And you're going to be the one who knows that best. But you're not, like, running away from this is not an option. So maybe it is making sure that it all just goes away and never gets out. Maybe he needs to have a conversation with his friend. Hey, I did this thing. This is, you know, why I did it. How can I now rebuild our, our relationship? Because that's the thing. He violated this relationship with his friend seemingly for the sake of maybe another group or some other friends. But I do think that you have to deal with the consequences of that and letting him know that it's not, oh, just because he did the essay or did whatever, like it's not over. Like this is a real world thing that has real world consequences. And that can pop back up at any time. And I think in the end, people end up getting hurt, but the action that started that already happened. And so now what you have to do is see how can you try to, you know, make it right and thinking about like, what does this best friend want and need? Because the apology needs to be about him, not about your son feeling like, oh, I apologized. um, And now I'm free from guilt. It needs to be about the person who was hurt. So so you think that explicitly telling the son you're ashamed, you think that's a good idea? I mean, I do. If you're uncomfortable with the idea of ashamed, um, because maybe shame is something, you know, but saying I am I am so disappointed in my heart. (laughs) Right. Because that because I thought that that this was something that you knew and understood. And when feet to the fire, you didn't. And I appreciate that you said I'm not ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of, of, of the behavior, which. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think any of those conversations have to come with, I still love you, and I'm here, and I'm going to help you through this, right? But I think it's okay to let your kids know when they've let you you down, and also demonstrate for them, I'm still going to be here, I'm still, I still love you, and that is why it hurts so much, right? Because I know you're a better person, and I know you were taught differently, um, and still in this moment. So how now going forward, can I, as your parents support you in these moments? Like, what else do you need from us? Is the phone too much of a responsibility? Like, I, I think some of those questions are really valid. And, and Jamila, I think basically said this, like, you have to figure out why this happened. But it may be that like the texting or privacy of a phone, they're not ready for that. And this, this age 13 is such a, it's so tough. Kids just want to fit in. And it it sounds like he was doing this to fit in. And that's not an excuse at all. But just having an explicit conversation about that, about like what makes this kid that you were texting with, like what's compelling about their personality? Why do you want to be friends with this person? Yeah. And, and, and again, having them reflect on that. I love that idea, Jamila, of, of the apology essay. I have never heard that. And that's so cool. It's a great idea. I got that from my parents. I definitely had to write some essays in my day. <laughs> what did you write on? Do you remember? Probably being disrespectful, talking back. That was usually what I was guilty of, mouthing off to my parents. Yeah. But this topic for this question is so rich. Like, the, your kid will learn a lot if they go back and, like, watch some films, read some articles, and really get a get a deeper understanding of, of that word. I think that's, I think that could be profound. 
they need to understand that homophobia is dangerous. You know, like it can seem very innocuous if it's just, oh, you're so gay, you're so gay, you know, like that doesn't sound like the most violent thing in the world, but it's important that he understands one, just how painful it is to have your identity weaponized against you, you know, as a gay person to have the idea of who you are used to mean something just by default negative, you know, that like. So calling someone a you is insulting. That's painful. But in addition to that being painful, there's just the, the danger that comes with normalizing homophobia and being okay with saying nasty things about gay people and how easily that can become something far much more violent and hurtful. Well, ashamed of my son, please let us know how it goes. Everyone else, do you have some advice for our letter writer? Let us know by emailing us at momanddad at slate.com. That's also where you can send us any questions of your own. Reboot your credit card with Apple Card. Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. It gives you unlimited cash back every day on every purchase, up to 3%. And you can use that cash right away. No waiting and waiting for rewards. Just daily cash you can use right away on anything. Apply now in the Wallet app on iPhone and start using it right away. Subject to credit approval. Daily cash is available via an Apple Cash card or as a statement credit. See Apple Card customer agreement for terms and conditions. Apple Cash card is issued by Green Dot Bank, member FDIC. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is the beach. It's also the perfect place to enjoy the holidays. Here, you get all the holiday cheer you can handle, plus 60 miles of beaches and endless fun. Sometimes you need a holiday from the standard holiday celebration. Maybe you want to escape the cold, or maybe you want to start a new tradition. There are theme shows all over the Grand Strand at storied venues like the Carolina Opry and the Alabama Theater. Winter Wonderland at the beach features massive light displays and a brand new family fun zone. Holiday cheer is everywhere you look, like at Brook Green's Gardens Night of a Thousand Candles, where more than 2,500 candles and twinkling lights take over the Grand Botanical Gardens. There aren't many places where you can celebrate the holidays or ring in the new year with an ocean view. This time of year is great for horseback riding along the shoreline, fishing from chartered boats or in the intracoastal waterways, and golfing at any of the 80-plus award-winning courses. Take a break from the average holiday season at The Beach. Plan your getaway to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina at visitmyrtlebeach.com. This episode is brought to you by Best Buy. This year, let Best Buy be your holiday hype partner. Whether you're searching for exciting gifts, trying to snag the hottest holiday deals, or looking for ways to simplify the giving and receiving experience, Best Buy is here to help. Best Buy makes it easy to get your gifts how and when you need them with free next day delivery on thousands of items, as well as same day delivery and in-store pickup options. Make Best Buy your go-to gifting destination this holiday season for products that help you enjoy what really matters, like quality time with the family. We have been watching kids' movies together. Now both of my kids are old enough to sit through a whole movie. And we have a TV that sometimes works. So I think it actually might be time to invest in a proper TV so we can watch stuff together in bed, get real cozy before bedtime. It's it's been like so nice to sit with my family and and appreciate culture with them. It's been so nice just to have the four of us together watching movies. It's like my favorite thing to do. No matter what your plans are this season, Best Buy is the perfect destination for all your holiday needs. Shop great deals on gifts now at Best Buy. It's finally time for recommendations. Jamila, what have you got for us this week? I am recommending for like all two of you who haven't seen it yet, Wakanda Forever. It is so good. It does violate my policy on movie length. It is extremely long. It's two hours and 40 minutes. But I was able to make it through without a single bathroom break, which is incredible for me. And my mind wandered a few times. But for the most part, I was present for nearly three hours. It's a different film from the first film. It complements the first film beautifully. It really... (sighs) 
in a thoughtful way, takes you on a grief journey um, and pays tribute to Chadwick Boseman in such a beautiful way while I think presenting ways for viewers to think about death and loss. And I just found it helpful in that regard, you know, as somebody who struggles with death. And um, it's just also just ridiculously entertaining. I think it has a really feel good ending. You have to stay for the last scene, like with all Marvel movies. It's so important that you stay for the last scene for this one. It's just a really, really well done film. Yeah, I'm trying to go this week. And to, it's it's is it T'Challa's younger sister who is like the main character? T'Challa's younger sister is the lead. That's so cool. She was amazing in the first one. She was, and there's another female lead. I don't want to spoil it, but I mean, it's just it's it's a girl power movie for sure. Just really, really great. Ryan Coogler is a genius director. Did I see that Elaine's in it too? Julia Louis Dreyfus. She is. She <laughs> is. Like, like I would have never thought that, but I love it. How about you, Elizabeth? Uh, I'm recommending two books written by this mother-daughter team, Christy Jordan Fenton and Margaret Pokayak Fenton. And the first one is Fatty Legs. And then the other one is called When I Was Eight. And it's the picture book version of Fatty Legs. We were reading this in conjunction with our trip. And I ended up reading a lot of it out loud and was just like so moved and think it's something that everyone should read. So it's about indigenous people from the Arctic region. And one of the daughters really wants to learn to read. But the only way for that to happen is for her to go to a um, residential school. And then it is her firsthand account of including pictures from that time, like photographs and also these beautiful illustrations of their time in the residential school, the stuff that that happened and how cruel they were. But at the end is really about fighting for your own human dignity. And so I think it's a wonderful book to sort of set the stage on residential schools and the things that we have done to indigenous peoples, but also this tale that like stuck with my kids, even in the picture book, about fighting for your own human dignity and those around you. So they're really lovely. Fatty Legs is probably for ages 9 to 12, and When I Was 8 is probably 5 to to 8 or 9, um, depending on where your kids are. We read them both and love them. I was trying to figure out how to introduce it to the kids and uh, to the younger, to Teddy, who is 6, and Googled it and found out there was a picture book and immediately got it, and um, they're just so lovely. So check those out, Fatty Legs and When I Was 8. Great. My recommendation this week is... It's a podcast. Everyone has a podcast now. Everyone, including your favorite aardvark, Arthur. He's got his own podcast now. And frankly, yeah, it's delightful. They just launched it like a month ago. So new episodes come out every Thursday. It feels tonally very much like the TV show. I don't know if you grew up with that. I did. I love Arthur and Noah loves Arthur. And so this podcast is great. It's like 18 minutes long. For weeks and weeks and weeks, she was going to sleep listening to Julie's Library, which is lovely. But it's great that she has another show that she really likes in her rotation. And uh, yeah, it's 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 great. Like each episode, they just take on one story. There was one about a spelling bee, one about a banned book, which, uh, you know, very topical. If you like Arthur, the show, you will like Arthur, the podcast from PBS Studios. I thought you were going to say, if you like aardvarks. <laughs> like aardvarks. <laughs> You'll like the Arthur podcast. This is the show for you. (laughs) All right. That's it for the show. This episode of Mom and Dad Are Fighting is produced by Rosemary Belson and Christy Taiwo Macanjula. For Jamila Lemieux and Elizabeth Newcamp, I'm Zach Rosen. Thanks for listening. This episode is brought to you by Best Buy. Whether you're searching for exciting gifts or trying to snag the hottest holiday deals, Best Buy is here to help. From air fryers for the aspiring foodies in your life to smartwatches your fitness friends will love, Best Buy is your gift-giving destination for everyone on your list. And Best Buy makes it easy to get your gifts how and when you need them with free next-day delivery on thousands of items, as well as same-day delivery and, of course, in-store pickup options. Shop great deals on gifts now at Best Buy.